Hey everyone, it's Julie here, also known as Mrs England's Emporium. Welcome back to my channel. So today I am going charity shopping and fingers crossed, it is an area we haven't been to in quite a while. And it's also an area that unfortunately for us, there is no signal for mobile phones. It's like it's a blackout area, it's bizarre. So you can never actually comp things while you're there. Um, so it's somewhere we don't go very often, but there's quite a few charity shops. And I'm going to do this as a long video because I've had a few people say they like the short videos. I've had a few people say they like the long videos. So every now and again, I'm going to mix it up. I'm going to do some shorts and then two parters. And then I'm going to do some long ones as well. So this is going to be a long video. Um, I'm going to keep the footage in, show you what I've looked at, where I've been and talk you through it. Um, I will do a voiceover because I've been told that that's much more helpful than just looking at the footage. It's not that I like the sound of my own voice. Right, so without further ado, we'll get into it. I will talk you through what I'm doing at the charity shops and at the end, I will show you what I bought. See you soon. Hello everyone. Right, okay, so today we have gone to um, a few charity shops that we don't normally go in. They're ones that we probably visit once every six months, if that. We used to go quite often because we used to pick up one of our children from one of the schools down, this, down the road, but we don't anymore, so it's just a case of as and when we don't find anything at other ones, we'll come to these. So, yeah, um, these charity shops, for some reason, I think I probably will mention this again because I like to repeat myself, um, you can't get a signal on your phone. So it's really hard to comp anything. I had a look at that bag because I thought it looked interesting, but it was nothing special, so that's why I put it back. You will notice today as well that um, I do look through the clothes a little bit and the only reason for that is just because there wasn't a massive amount of bric-a-brac. But wait until the end, as I always say, because at the end I will show you what we got. Um, we did pick up some pretty good stuff. Um, so it's worth, worth hanging around for, so bear with me. So yeah, I've de I decided at this point, which I have again changed my mind about, that I would look through the clothing and see if I can find anything nice. Um, but I've since decided that I, I think I'm going to give up clothing completely because I get so many returns through clothing, through not fitting. As you, as every, as you know, if you're a lady, you know, it's hard to find clothes to fit and um, we're all different shapes, so it's hard. Yeah, that was a T Tenarius Targaryen Game of Thrones figure. They wanted five ninety nine for it. Um, I thought that was expensive, so I didn't get it. That was just a little vintage-looking car. Again, nothing exciting, so I put that back too. Um, yeah, the Daenerys, Targ the Daenerys Targaryen, Mother of Dragons, um, Game of Thrones figure, it was too expensive. They wanted five ninety nine for it, and basically, I think they're going on eBay for ten to fifteen pounds, if that. So that's why I put it back. But yeah, I've just I have decided because all of my returns come from clothing because with ladies' clothing, all ladies are different shapes and sizes. We all have different sizes up the top, different sizes up the bottom, and it's very hard to get things to fit. And I think that's why men's clothing does so well. Me and Rob were discussing this because men are pretty much straight up and down. Correct me if I'm wrong. Rob don't get many returns at all. And I think when men do... Um, put on a little bit of weight. They adjust their size accordingly and it fits them and it's fine. But with women, it's not like that, as we know. You know, we're I'm, a curvy, I'm a curvy lady and I say lady. <laughs> I um, had a jacket 
on my recent sales video that has now sold three times and is not coming back because I've had positive feedback on it. But it was a size 16 and it's come back twice because it didn't fit. Now, the last lady that bought it, it fit her and that's great. But I found that when I put it on, it was tight around my hip area <laughs> and it was massive up the top around my shoulders and my armpit area. It was huge. So, you know, something that fits someone else perfectly doesn't always fit someone else. So, yeah, I've just decided, I think, that unless I find something that is amazing, I see something in a window or Rob comes across something that's really good, I'm not really going to bother. Um, shoes and bags, I am still doing. Here I am browsing the shoe area. But, yeah... I've decided to give up the clothing for now. I just don't think it's worth it. Like, touch wood, and I'm probably going to go back on this in another video, but I have had no returns up to now on any of my bric-a-brac and anything else that I'm selling, really. Electricals, the lot. I've had no returns on anything and toys as well. But I do get returns on my clothes. And I think they are, even though you put the measurements in, people don't always read the description, people don't always look at the photos properly and they buy stuff and then they're like, oh, it doesn't fit. And you're like, great, another return. So, yeah, for that reason, I am knocking clothes on the head for now, but I have looked at them in this video. But, yeah, that's my decision for the moment. It may change again in the future. I've always said I'm not, I'm never going to completely 100% say I'm turning my back on clothing because there may come a time when I go out to find stuff to sell and I don't find anything bric-a-brac or I don't find anything toy-wise. Um, it hasn't happened yet, but if it does, obviously clothing is there for me to fall back on. So there may be clothing in future videos. I'm always going to show what Rob buys because he is still very much buying clothing. So, you know, I will be showing clothes on this channel that we've bought, but it will more than likely just be men's for the time being. But like I said, I do pick up shoes and bags still. And, you know, like maybe scarves and things like that that don't particularly need to have a good fit to them, I may still pick up. But yeah, I had a good look through these trousers and yeah, I quite like those for myself. But then I thought they were a bit maybe even too wacky for me. <laughs> I'm looking for clothes for myself at the moment just because I'm doing Weight Watchers and I'm losing a lot of weight. I have actually lost over a stone. Thank you for the applause, people. I, I can hear you clapping and cheering. It's amazing, isn't it? But <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm not spending loads of money on clothing at the minute for obvious reasons because I am shrinking and I don't want to be buying loads of clothing that, you know, it's going to cost me a lot of money and then I'm going to have to change it again in a few weeks' time. But, yeah, I couldn't find anything here. Those trousers were like a size 24, I think, but they were really, really nice. I really liked the um, material on those, but, again, I didn't pick them up. Um, the clothing wasn't bad priced in here. I can't remember which shop this is. I don't even know whether it says at the beginning... Um, I'll try and look at one of the labels. There's Rob. Hey, babe. Um, yeah, he always has a good look through the clothing. Um, yeah, I had a look. I, f I found a box set on here, I believe. Let's see if I do show it. I don't know whether this is when I was looking at the box set. Yep, Benadorm. Now, I've never seen a Benadorm box set, and me and Rob quite like Benadorm. We like the earlier episodes. I think they're very funny. Um, anyway... It was, I think, series one to four. Now, I looked on eBay and the box set was selling quite well, but it was the full, complete one, which I think is series one to six, if I'm not mistaken. Um. So, yeah, I left it behind because it wasn't worth much. And, yeah, things like box sets and stuff in here were quite expensive. Is it me or do charity shops seem to, to, seem to have all of the same games all the time? Now, that was one. I can't even see what it was. But I wasn't going to buy it because... Oh, there you go. It's like a guitar playing one. I think that's Brain Train that I've got there. All the charity shops I go to that have DS games in have Brain Train in. I love that game. I've actually got that in my personal collection. <laughs> my daughter's actually swiped. My eldest daughter has swiped my DSi 
so I can't play on it, but I do have that game and I love it, but it seems to be in every single charity shop you go in. Um, yeah, and a lot of a lot of the same games as well. Let me show me in my bag for some reason. I don't even know what I'm doing. Probably getting something out for Rob. Um, yeah, I find there's a lot of FIFA's, a lot of Pro Evolution, a lot of... Um, oh, what else is there? There's a lot of Xbox 360 games. Now, wasn't the Xbox 360 the one that you that went faulty and it had like the is it was it the black screen or the Ring of Death or something? I don't know. Right, I was looking at this. I wanted to look inside it, but it was taped up. I believe it's a Bing Crosby box set. Um, I couldn't tell by the actual box whether it was a DVD box set or a CD box set. Now I think it was a CD one. But it was taped up, so I couldn't even check it. <laughs> so I was like, yeah, I'm not buying that. And to be fair, when I looked online, there was none listed, which isn't always a bad thing. But I just thought, I can't even check it. And I don't, for all I know, the discs could be missing or they could be scratched. I just thought, nah, you're all right. Right, okay, I always now have a ritual of looking in the windows because I find that a lot of charity shops put the good stuff in the windows. So I always look now. I never used to. I used to be real bad. I used to walk past the window display and Rob would be like, why are you looking in the window? And I'd be like, yeah, you're right. I should be looking in the window. That's where the good stuff is. Not always, but yeah, not in this case, unfortunately. Yeah, put your hand sanitizer on people while you're out. Keep yourself safe. That's what I've been doing in every single charity shop. I even carry some in my bag as well still. I haven't been using my mask, but usually because there's nobody else in there or there ain't many people about, um, I don't know whether I should maybe be using it. But to be fair, I've got no symptoms or anything. So uh, now this I did pick up, but I'll tell you about that at the end. I was a bit excited about that bag. I like picking up bags of random toys. Obviously, they have to have stuff in them that interests me. Um, there was a doll there that I just picked up with pink hair. I couldn't see any markings on it, so that's why I didn't buy it. Um, it wasn't expensive or anything. I think it was like a pound or 50 pence, but I tend to only go for ones that I know I can make money on. So things like Barbies, Bratz, Ever After High, which I've just found out about. Um, Monster High, um, yeah, and, so, and Disney dolls as well, but I tend to bundle up Disney dolls because they're not worth much on their own, but you can, if you get a good bundle going, you can get good money. Um, I was just looking here while I'm stood like staring at this poor person who's trying to shop. Um, I was looking at the games and stuff, you can't see, but on the shelf above there was quite a lot of games and jigsaws and things. Um, nothing exciting. I'm always looking for either a, a ghost house, is it? Or go yeah, I think it's called ghost house or um, question of sport with the Mike Tyson card in. <laughs> I don't know whether I'll ever find one, but you know, it's fun having a look anyway. Yeah, I like the look of that bag, but again, nothing special. So I left it. I was just waiting here to have a look at these coats, waited for that lady to move out the way. But yeah, I, I haven't found any clothing that has made me want to buy or get excited for a long time now. I find that I think a lot of people since um, COVID struck, I think a lot of people have either started selling their own stuff online or they've kept on hold of things for longer. Um, I think a lot of the cheap stuff has been going to charity shop and not the nicer items that were there before. So, yeah, that's my theory anyway on why the charity shops have been like they are. And also I found that they are pricing things like really high, which I don't understand because resellers aren't going to go in and buy everything like they they even like price like Florence and Fred which is from Tesco's and is it TU that's from Sainsbury's and even George from Asda the price them really high as well and I think resellers aren't going to go for those they're for people that want to actually genuinely go in the charity shop and buy themselves something like I buy myself those clothes for myself to wear 
But I wouldn't spend £10 on a coat from, from Florence and Fred or £10 on a George coat. Do you know what I mean? Right, I've been looking through all these lately. Now, that shirt that I've just got there, that's for Dexter, my son, because um, I've been looking for something. I always get him a Christmas jumper, but he's always boiling hot in it, bless him. He's a real sweaty boy because he's always running about all over. And we have a lot of people around at Christmas normally, say normally, because obviously last year we weren't allowed, so we didn't. But this year, we're having family round. I just thought, that shirt's perfect. It's short-sleeved. It's lovely. And then I got a T-shirt for my daughter with Macaulay Culkin on it, saying, um, Merry Christmas, you filthy animal. But I've been looking at the Christmas jumpers to sell on, and I've found that in every single charity shop, there's the T-shirt. <laughs> in every single charity shop where I've looked at Christmas jumpers to buy to sell on, they've been £4 plus. Now, I don't think that is expensive for a Christmas jumper. I'm not whinging about that, but I can't buy a Christmas jumper for £4 and sell it on because I think the most I'm going to get for a Christmas jumper is probably twelve ninety nine, the very most, and it would have to be a good one. Now, a lot of these were bobbled. They had marks on, they had holes in, they had, like, pom-poms missing off noses and all things like that. So that's why I didn't get any, and I, I didn't get any at all today. I quite like the look of that Call of Duty t-shirt, but again, that was a George one, and I think it had something like five quid on it. Um, This cushion, I was looking at it for ages. It was only £2, I think, if I remember rightly. It's a really nice Christmassy snowman cushion, and I, th I was trying to sort of work out in my head, is it worth me buying this? Because I know people buy a lot of Christmassy stuff, but I ended up just going with my gut. I wasn't completely feeling it and I put it back. I don't know whether that was a mistake. I mean, I maybe could have made £12 on that, £15 on it, but I don't know because it didn't have a label on it. I couldn't see where it was from, so it kind of put me off. I mean, it could have been a Primark one that cost a fiver in the shop for all I know. So that's why I left it. I found something really interesting on these shelves. I was really excited about these. These were the best shelves that I have seen in a charity shop in a long time. They had such great stuff. A lot of it was a little bit out of my price range, but it was, it was all right. Sorry about that. I had to cut off. My daughter just came back in from school. <laughs> yes, yeah, so, sir, as I was saying, this was a really cool couple of shelves in this charity shop they were right at the back and they were kind of behind the counter so I don't know whether people realize that they can go look I found that amazing ashtray I was really excited I'm really into like pub memorabilia and uh, man cave type stuff and I never find it so I was really excited to find that it was 50p so anyway, wait till the end and I'll show you it properly. Um, there was a few other things on here. There was this cash box. Um, it had a lock on it and everything. I didn't get it um, just because I wasn't sure on how much it was worth. I think it was priced at about, it was either four or five pounds, so a little bit too much for me. If you think I should have got it, drop me a comment and let me know. Because like I say, I'm still, everyone's still learning all the time. Every day is a school day, so... It's always good to get advice and get other people's opinions. Yeah, there was a lot of really cool stuff on here. There was something at the bottom. Um, I can't remember what it was now. I don't even know whether I'll show you it. Um, it was... Oh, I can't even remember what it was. There was something that I remember something. God, I'm rubbish at narrating this. <laughs> anyway, now you can see that I've got the ashtray really close up. Um, I was looking at games on this rack. Um, the games that I got were a bit of a fail, but we have a Wii, and our Wii has quite a collection of games with it, and when we come to sell it, because we look after it, it's in good condition, we've got all the bits and pieces with it, it's going to be a really good bundle that we're going to sell. We won't be selling it for a few years yet, because we still get plenty of use out of it, but I always say, if I see any games that I think are good, I'll buy them if they're for the Wii and then I just bundle them up with the others. We play on them, we get some pleasure out of them and then when we actually decide to sell it, 
we'll get more for it, which is always cool. The games are only a pound each as well. I think one of them was one, um, five games for a pound, but I couldn't find any more, so I only got the one. I don't even know how much I paid for that in the end, probably a pound. Um, yeah, they had a lot of nice Christmas stuff in here. They had DVD box sets. But again, they wanted quite a lot for them. So I did leave those behind. You get a nice close-up of the ashtray again. Why not? <laughs> Let me see. I'm trying to see what I'm doing here. I think I'm actually waiting to pay here. Uh, Rob's got some shoes. He did get two pairs of shoes from here. I'll show you them at the end. Um, one of them turned out to be a pair of ladies shoes which I don't actually mention on this video so let's have a little game and see if you can pick which pair of shoes that Rob bought were the ladies ones that I actually have listed now on my eBay so do not cheat and go look <laughs> just uh, yeah see Always remember to check your games, make sure that they're in the box because I've got games to the counter before every time and there's been a game missing. So always check that and always check for scratches on the disc. I mean, it's good if there's a manual in, but it doesn't matter if there isn't. It's not a necessity. Right, here's the next one. Right, I can't actually remember whether I found anything in here or not. Hand gel again, very important. I think that was actually a spray, so it took me by surprise. They had a lot of Christmas stuff for sale in here. I remember that. I think this might be the Oxfam. And yeah, it was it was pretty good. Um, I find that Oxfam shops can be really, really expensive. But in the same breath... I would say that they do have a lot of good stuff. And the last time I went into an ox farm and I called it um, expensive farm and rip off farm. <laughs> when I walked in after I said that, the universe definitely proved me wrong because I bought about seven or eight things from this particular one. And they were good stuff and they were reasonably priced and they weren't damaged. So, you know, I want to thank the charity shop fairies for letting me find those things and proving me wrong. <laughs> Which can happen quite a lot. I don't know whether any of you are the same, but I find that when I go in, there are some charity shops that we go in quite often. And they will be featured a lot on my channel. So you probably see me go in some of the same ones all the time. Um, and some of those ones I already have an idea before I go in this is an expensive one they price everything up or they don't always have a lot of good stuff in here and you know blah 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 and you kind of already tell yourself that you're not going to find anything decent and if you do it's going to be too expensive do any of you have shops like that I have three where I live and they're ones I go in all the time because I will not not look in them because you never know what you're going to find and I keep learning this lesson over and over again when I write off a charity shop and get annoyed and I don't go in for a bit I find the next time I go in I find some amazing stuff at a great price and you know it's stuff that I wouldn't normally find so don't write places off. Don't be one of those people that goes around bad-mouthing certain shops and all that because, you know, I do that. I'm not going to lie. But I'm trying not to now because I find that when I do that, I, um, I'm proved wrong all the time. Now, the funny thing is about these clips, I don't buy CDs or DVDs to sell um, but I always have a look for myself because sometimes I'll find a, a film or a box set or an album that I really, really want and it'll pop up in a charity shop and I'm like, wow. And charity shops tend to do these things at quite reasonable prices, I find. Um, a little story. A couple of weeks ago now, I went to some charity shops with my best friend, Lisa, 
and I found a Prince album, which you never find in charity shops. You don't find Prince albums in charity shops. You find the greatest hits, because I think a lot of people that, you know, kind of like him would have bought the greatest hits, but his albums are usually bought by hardcore fans. You don't really find them in charity shops. So if you want to get a Prince album, you need to either be looking in actual, you know, shops like HMV um, and places like that, uh, or you need to be going onto eBay and looking on there for people selling them. Um, I am not selling any of mine, by the way. That is not a plug. I will never get rid of them. But I haven't got all his albums. His albums are very expensive, even secondhand. So I am collecting them gradually. And I found one of his albums. I can't remember what it was called now. I think it was in like Arabic writing or something on the front of it. But it was when he was a symbol. It wasn't when he was Prince. And it was an album that has My Name Is Prince on it and The Max. And I knew I didn't have it. And I was so excited. Don't know how much it was because it didn't have a price on it. But I think the CDs were 50p, if I remember rightly. Anyway... I grabbed hold of it and I was real excited. Took it to the counter and just as I got to the counter, I realised that my excitement had got the better of me and I thought I'd better check the disc. I didn't even check that the disc was in there. So I opened it up and the disc was in. So I was like, yes, great. Round one complete. We're fine, we've got the disc. Took the disc out, turned it over and I have never seen a CD so scratched in my life. I actually nearly cried. I was like, who has done this? It looked like someone had actually scratched it on purpose, you know, like with a knife or with keys or something. Maybe it was somebody's, you know, like exes who had annoyed them and they scratched the hell out of it and then it ended up in a charity bag. I don't know, but I was really upset. So I'm looking out for those when I go, this was interesting. This is a vintage game. Um, I can't see what it's called. German something. German chatter, I think it was called. But again, it was all taped up. So I couldn't undo it in fear of damaging the box or getting in trouble by the charity shop people. So I couldn't actually check what was in it or anything. And like I've said already, probably several times by now, um, this charity shop, well, this area where these charity shops are, you cannot get a signal on your phone. So I couldn't even comp it. So I had to leave it behind, unfortunately. Would you have bought it? Let me know. I think it was from the 1970s. It looked very vintage. It said 1970-something on it. I'm sure it did. Um, but, yeah, I couldn't look at it. This was really nice. I'm pretty... Yeah, that was like a little mouse or gerbil eating a nut. I thought that was very cute. And that butterfly as well. I've seen that butterfly before. Now, I don't know whether it's been on somebody's video or whether I've seen it in someone's house or what, but I don't know whether they're worth anything. I think they wanted £5 for that butterfly. That's why I left it. I think it'd have, if it had been £2, I would have got it, just out of curiosity. That is really nice, and it's boxed. I'm not going to say any more. Wait till the end. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of nice little bits and pieces on here. But again, the prices were just that little bit too high for me to take a risk on trying them. Sometimes I wish I was a little braver and that I would, you know, actually take the risk to get things. But this time I did not. But I did really like that little gerbil. It was very cute. It had lovely eyes and it felt quite expensive, but... Like I say, I mean, I, I can't remember how much it was now. I don't know whether it showed on screen. But, yeah, I didn't I didn't really want to risk it. I think I had to look at it about three more times. <laughs> I couldn't help myself. I was like, oh. And I always, like, really look at jugs and things or anything that's interesting. Teapots. I've left a lot of teapots behind lately. Oh, these were all um, cufflinks and tie pins in there, which I thought were pretty cool. They weren't mega expensive, but... A little bit too much for me to buy. One ninety nine, two ninety nine. I think some were ninety nine p. But I don't know enough about them to risk buying. Sorry if I keep abruptly going off here. I um, I keep getting interrupted by children and husband and all sorts. Um yeah, these 
they had loads of nice little snacky things there but as i said i'm on my weight watchers so i wasn't buying any of those yeah there's uh rob buying the stuff i gave him that i stick on his bill <laughs> yeah um it was a nice little shop i did actually have a look at the clothes in here just a quick look but there was nothing of major interest um it isn't a very big one this and one side of it is literally all cds books dvds and records as i showed you so the bric-a-brac's quite scarce i don't know where we're going next let's have a look a little wander down the street they're all quite close together up here i think it's cents i can see in the distance it was like four doors down so i decided to just keep the camera rolling <laughs> quite quiet down here at this time which was good we went quite early yeah this is the sense one i can't remember whether i actually picked anything up in here or not um again I'd, i think i did have a quick scramble through the clothing so i do apologize about the camera angles um i did have my strap on this day <laughs> i kept meaning actually when i was looking at the clothing i kept meaning to tilt the camera up so you can see the labels but to be fair there was nothing of interest here you're probably better just looking at the materials and pretty patterns and stuff of everything because there was nothing and um, we thought we saw a pair of jewels wellies which you won't see they'll be off camera i don't know whether i actually get them down and put them in front of the camera i might do i think i actually do so rob thought they were jewels wellies i actually thought they were as well there they are but no, they were Florence and Fred. <laughs> they do a really good imitation. A really good imitation. If you wanted to get a pair of wellies that look like Jules wellies, go to Tesco. <laughs> yeah, I had a quick browse of the shoes. Obviously, I like the purple ones, but they weren't branded. Um, I was lucky checking out those for Dexter, but to be fair, I have just got him some, so... Um, I think they were a little bit too small anyway. But it does really like dinosaurs, so I have to have a look. Yeah, the shoes weren't great today. I find that most of the time if I go out and I go to more than, say, four charity shops, I will find one pair of shoes that are worth getting. And I have done that the last few times I've been out, especially when I haven't found much in the bric-a-brac. But there was absolutely nothing in shoes today. Nothing at all. I think this is all they had in toys as well. Oh, no, there was a few around the corner. But it was a bit, um, yeah, a bit scarce. There wasn't much there. And the things they did have were really expensive. I'm not going to talk about that too much at the moment because I don't know whether I got it on camera. If I didn't, there is a part when I go back and look anyway. Um. I think I thought that was a flat Eric for some reason, but it was actually a PG Tips monkey. Um, one of the newer ones, obviously. Here we are. Here's some bric-a-brac. Um, again, it was a lot of like mass reproduction, cheap stuff. Um, mass production, sorry, not mass reproduction. DMA. Do you know, I can never talk on these. What is that I'm looking at there? Oh, it's a jug. See, I always look at jugs. I always look at teapots. Um, I very rarely look at tea sets just because of how heavy they are and I'm not sure whether I can get them home in one piece. Um, if it was local, which this isn't, it's two buses away, um, I maybe would have looked more. But, yeah, I don't tend to, unless there's something, like, really cool. Um, there was a lot of tea and coffee pots in here. Um, loads of DVDs, records and books and stuff. I think I actually catch the charity shop lady in a minute. Yeah, there she is. <laughs> yeah, there's loads. Um, I was looking to see if there was any games. I can't remember whether I actually spotted any in here. I thought that Soccer AM DVD was a game for a minute and then I was like, no, it's not. Um, yeah, I think this is when I go back round. I don't know whether you'll be able to see what I'm looking at there. Right, above this shelf... I'm going to see if I bring it down. I don't think I did. There was a stack of Barbie, brand new in boxes, um, like Crayola packs. So it basically had a Barbie outfit and some 
Crayola, but there they are, Crayola pens, but they wanted £7 each for them. Now, I'm not even sure I could get that for them. Um, that was like a pair of imitation Uggs in a presentation box, but they wanted about £10 for those. So they were out of my price range. But yeah, I was a bit gutted. I said to Rob, if, if the Barbie Crayola box set things had been four, maybe even five pound each, I might have got them. But I thought seven was just that little bit too much. Here I am again looking at more Christmas jumpers again. They were all four pound plus. Um, nothing that I could make any money off. And I aren't buying jumpers for us this year, as I've already explained, because we all get too hot on Christmas Day. We end up taking them off anyway. So it's a bit pointless. So I'm looking, for us, I'm looking for T-shirts and dresses and stuff. I did find a dress in here. I'm pretty sure it had gingerbread men all over it. Anyway, I had a good look at it. I don't know whether you'll see it on camera. I don't think you do. But it, when I pulled it out, I had a good look at it and I thought, oh, that's nice. And then I saw that it was a size 24. So it was too big for me, but um, yeah, it was nice. But yeah, we didn't, I don't think we actually, I don't think either of us bought anything in here. There was just nothing. It was, yeah, it was a bit on the bleak side. This one, what is this one? I like to try and remember where I went. No chance on here. Sanitising again. I can usually tell from the labels. Here we go. Christmas jumpers again, I think. Oh, what is this one? I've forgotten what it is. Anyway, I was looking at that Batman outfit, but it was quite cheap feeling and they wanted like eight quid for it, which is probably what I'd get. All the Christmas jumpers again were priced too high for me to make any money off. Um, yeah, I always have a look at the men's shoes and stuff, see if there's anything. They usually have like a men's little bric a brac bit, don't they? And I always tend to have a little scout around. I did find some interesting things in here. I like the Christmas stuff in the charity shops at the minute. I think they're amazing. I think this is an Age UK. I think it is. But yeah, anyway, it was it was a good one. I did get some good stuff from here. Um, I really like the penguins on there, but I don't think they were worth anything because of the price they'd basically put them on for it price them out of uh, my range unfortunately but yeah this was I was actually filming this before Rob came in Rob popped somewhere else and then came back over um but yeah it was a nice little shop this it was quite spacious there wasn't many people in um and people people were quite courteous when they did come in in this one which was nice I can't remember what I was looking at here I'm like I look like I'm just stood staring at nothing <laughs> I had a quick browse of the rails as I walked past, but I didn't look through them. Again, looked at the shoes. Nothing there of interest to me. I have been trying to find some boots to sell because um, I know boots go really well this time of year, but obviously you want to get decent-ish brands if you can. Um, and I find that in the charity shops at the minute, the boots are all over 8 to £10, pounds, even the cheaper ones. So they're not really helping me out there. Um, so I can't, I haven't been able to get any. I had a look at the coats. That was a nice, um, I think that's a Jane Norman one, like the tweed, not, it's not tweed, is it? It's like tartan. Um, yeah, there wasn't much there. I always get excited when I go to the bric-a-brac. Now, there were some really cool dragons on here. Um, and they reminded me of a friend of mine who used to collect dragons in the 90s, late 90s. Um, but they weren't the same make. These ones were Danbury Mint ones, which is the same make as a Betty Boop calendar that I sold recently. Um, yeah, Danbury Mint can either go for really good money, it depends what it is, or it can be a bit hit and miss. But they wanted too much for the dragons, unfortunately. The the dragons they had, they were really lovely, but they wanted £25 for the bigger one and £10 for the smaller one. When we actually got to a place where we could have a look and see how much they were worth, that's kind of how much they were going for. Um, Maybe £20 more, but it wasn't worth laying out that money to get that. Um, I think that was just like a supermarket, maybe from Morrison's or something like that, biscuit barrel I just picked up. I did like the look of it because it's Christmassy, but again, not much profit in it. That's why I put it back. 
Um, what else am I looking at here? I don't know what that is. My camera angles are shocking today. I do apologise. I can't even see what they are. Something gold. Uh, yeah, I saw that and thought it looked interesting and then realised it was quite cheap. I just like the colour of the, the glass. It was like a green. Um, there's some nice tea sets in here, but nothing that I wowed over. Thimbles. Now, these were cheap. They were bagged up at 75 pence a bag. I think one of them was a pound a bag because it had more in it. So I thought, why not give them a go? I'll show you them at the end. Um, obviously, I did buy them because they were, they were really cheap. I wanted that for us because we really need a big mixing bowl, but it was £4. And I thought, you can actually probably pick one up for not much more than that, a brand new one. And I didn't really want to carry it around. Big bowl, it takes up half my trolley. <laughs> I thought, I'll leave that for another time. I'll buy a mixing bowl another time. I can get one of them anywhere. It's nothing uh, particularly exciting, is it? I am sorry about the close-up of the thimble here. Um, yeah, there was like a silver like serving tray there, but again, not a really good make. Um, what else is on here that I looked at? Let's have a look. Yeah, there's like a teacup set with plates underneath it. There was a real nice like glass dish, but again, ten a penny. You get them all the time. The dragons were on these shelves, but I don't know whether you will get to see them because I think they're quite high up and also they were quite heavy. So I don't know whether I actually picked it up and put it in front of my camera. Next time I will learn but um, to tilt my camera. But to be fair, I was right near the checkout here and the guy was watching me. So I felt like, oh, he's going to start asking me why I'm filming and stuff if I start tilting my phone around. So that's why I didn't. Um, I love those straw heart things there. I've got them up in our house. Just, you know, just so you know. <laughs> I had a look in that red box. That was a bauble, I believe, with a penguin on it. Um, dear me, I don't know what's going on here. But yeah, I didn't get it because... Again, it had no markings, nothing special. Um, I mean, it was nice, but I can't. I, the, the price was too high, definitely too high. Otherwise, I would have got it because it was pretty cool. Anyway, thank you so much for watching, and I will show you what I got. Sorry about that. I will show you what I got in just a minute, so stay tuned. Right, so I've put my torch on here. <laughs> I am back at home and this is our haul, which I'm going to quickly go through. I'm not showing my face because at the moment my lip syncing at the end of my videos is so bad, even I can't stand it. So I'm going to do it like this so you can all kind of see what I've got. Um, so basically, um, Rob, I'll we'll start with Rob's clothing. He picked up these mayors for three pounds from the Dove House. Um, they're just a pair of Maya trousers. Um, nothing exciting, but these are a pretty much bread and butter item for Rob. He gets anywhere between, I would say 25 and 40 pounds for a pair of those. He also picked up these, what are these? Henley's jeans, four pound again from Dove House. Sorry about that, my son was shouting me. So these have got Henley's written I think it says Henley Project, um, Henley's Project across the bum with Deluxe. Um, they've got this nice little badge here. I'm not sure how much he's going to get for those. I'm going to guess around 25 to 40 on those. They're really good condition. Um, the bottoms of the legs are good. We've always said though, um, and we've learnt from other people, that you shouldn't shy away from jeans, even if they are frayed at the bottom, because some people like that and they still sell. Um, this is something I bought for my son, which I still haven't showed him. <laughs> it's only a Primark shirt, but I loved it. It's Christmassy, it's got penguins all over it. So um, I, I couldn't even tell you how much I paid for that. I think it was about a pound. Um, I picked this up because I couldn't leave it. <laughs> Three pounds this was. Um, it's a medium Christmas t-shirt. 
and it says Merry Christmas, you filthy animal, home alone. Um, and it's got Kevin on the front, aka Macaulay Culkin. I love that. I think we'll probably keep that. I don't think it'll be a saleable item that will go for much more than what it's actually um, priced at, unfortunately. Um, right, so these are... They look like they could be new. They've got the buttons there in the bag. These were two ninety nine. Oh, they're a pair of Thomas Pink trousers. The very small waist. Um, he does well with these. I think again, probably around the thirty pound mark for those. Maybe a little bit more. Um, like I always say, I'm not particularly educated in men's clothing. He also picked up these shoes. These are <laughs> JS Joseph. Sibel, is that how you say it? Um, I don't know how much these were. They don't have a price on them. Let me see if I can find a receipt. Uh, no, no, unfortunately not. Um, I'm not sure how much these were. I think they were around six to eight pound he paid for these. I don't know how much he'll get for those. Um, and he bought these as well. These actually have a tag in four pound. These are Sea Salt Deluxe shoes. Yeah, I like Sea Salt. These are really nice. They're like a uh, suede. They go, they go really well with our bedding. They're like a really nice suede with the um, detailing on the toe. And the laces are intact. They don't look like they've been worn too much either. So they should be good for at least 30 to 40 pound. Right, now we're going to move on to the stuff that I bought. Right, so I need to be quiet with this one. Horrid Henry Wii game. Um, I paid a pound for that. So I think I'm going to make sure that works. And that's going to go away for my little boy for Christmas. But these are for sale. Disney Infinity and the World Guinness World Records of Video Game. Um, don't know how much these are worth, but they were literally a pound each. I think that was one, one pound for five. But I think I just paid a pound for it because I couldn't find any more. And these were a pound each. So I'm very pleased with those. Like I say, I'm going to keep that one. Those two, hopefully at least £10 each on those. This, I'm not sure. I need help with this one. Now, I paid 50p for it. I know it's obviously an ashtray. But it kind of reminded me of like pub ashtrays. I don't know whether this is a beer or something. But if anyone knows, let me know in the comments. But again, I'm hoping at least £12.99 for that. It's cool. But I am going to research it. This was two ninety nine. I couldn't leave it because it's just really cool. Um, Vincent Van Gogh, or Van Gogh, or whatever you want to call him, um, a sunflower's jug. Um, I don't know that I can get into this. I will show you that in a second, and I'll do a little video of what that looks like. These were three pound fifty. Now I'm pretty sure some of these are Polly Pockets. I am going to have to research them. It's been a long time since I've had Polly Pockets. But there's quite a few dolls in there. Now, that looks like um, a Disney Elsa. Um, but there's all sorts of bits in here. And I like picking up things like this because you never know what you're going to find. Again, if you know about Polly Pockets, let me know um, if these are looking like Polly Pockets to you. But again, £3.50. I just thought, why not pick that up? It could be worth a great deal. It might not be, but we'll see. And then I got this <laughs> lovely snowman cookie jar. Let me see. There we go, without breaking it. Lovely condition. Um, coming up to Christmas. Very nice. This was four pounds. And at the bottom, he says he's a Rington's Tea family business. Um, Sam the Snowman Cookie Jar. Now um, I looked at the comps on this and there was some selling for like £45. So I think I'm going to list him for about 40 and see what I can get. I think he's lovely. He's in season, obviously, coming up to Christmas. I will have to get him listed quickly. But yeah, I'm really pleased with him. And then the last thing I picked up was these thimbles. There was a load of bags of thimbles. Now, I know nothing about thimbles. I don't know what's worth anything and what's not, but I thought they're worth a go for the money. So these, I believe, are all like royal family ones, which are pretty cool. Um, so they were a pound. And then I got this other little bag for 75p, which is like, 
think it's like flowers and plants and stuff on it. 75 pence for that one. These were 75p and these have all got animals on, I believe. There's like horses, birds, foxes, all stuff like that. 75p for these three. Not sure why that is, but yeah, again, I didn't want to leave them. Friday's Child. I think these might be nursery rhyme type ones. And then 75p for these ones. Now, these ones are quite interesting. These are different ones. I mean, that one is like made out of, it looks like it's been threaded. And then you've got a see-through one there. And um, there's like one that looks like, um, is it Wedgwood? I'm not sure. But yeah, I'm going to have a good look through these anyway and see what they could be worth. I have no idea. But I just thought for the amount of money they were selling them for, I was picking them up. Okay, so here is what was in this lovely box. Vincent van Gogh, Sunflowers, the Leonardo collection, £2.99. It's boxed and it is this lovely jug, if I can get it out. There we go. It's beautiful. And it's got the thing on the bottom, so it is. The sticker's still there. It's great condition inside. I don't think this has probably ever been out of the box, so this is lovely. I think someone will snap this up for a Christmas present. I'm going to try for around £12.99 for this, if I can't find any comps on it. Um, so, yeah, at least that, hopefully. I think that'll be pretty good. Someone will buy it for Christmas. So... Let me know what you think. Ignore that envelope. <laughs> Keeping things for packaging. But yeah, let me know what you think to what we bought. I know it's not a great deal, but like I said, the charity shops we went to today, you can't comp things in them. And, you know, there's, there was a lot of stuff that was really overpriced. So anyway, in the footage, let me know if there's anything you would have picked up that I didn't. Um, and yeah, I will speak to you all soon. Like, subscribe, hit that bell for more. If you'd like to support my channel and buy me a coffee, I will give you a shout out in my next video. The link will be in the description and I will see you all soon. Bye guys.